Hi Raiders, it's LaDonna. I'm here, I'm grumpy. I'm having one of those days when nothing goes right. This is my third attempt at recording this video and I'm just choosing to believe that means it will be better than the first two attempts. <laughs> um, so, we're here to talk about writing, or I'm here to talk about writing. I don't know what you're here for, <laughs> but hi. Um, today, I want to talk about um, voice, finding your voice. And this is a massive topic that there are books and seminars and workshops. I've done workshops about it. Um, so we're going to keep it simple and brief. But um, the crux of this is how do you... How, how do you know that what you're writing is you, is your voice? And I have a friend who um, is is starting on a novel. He is his first real foray into writing. And so he's really concerned about how do I know that it's my voice? How do I find my voice? What is my voice? Um, and so the best way I can describe knowing that it's your voice is how do you write when no one else is reading it? No one's going to hear it. No one's going to see it. Um, what comes out of you straight from you to the page with no interference when you're not trying to sound like someone else or impress someone or win a contest or make this the best sentence you've ever written. Just You're just being true to what you have to say and how you want to say it. And I think that when we start out as writers, um, especially I know for myself, I started writing when I was a kid and I was trying to imitate writers that I loved. So I was telling my own stories, but they were obviously modeled after books that I was really into at the time. And I mean, this is where fan fiction comes from as well. And um, all of that, I think, is a very necessary part of the process. I think all artists start as um, copycats, right? Because you're inspired by something and you want to figure out how that was created and you want to try to make your own version of it. And then that evolves into you figuring out your own point of view and your own voice and what what you want to say, how you want to say it, what stories you want to tell in your own way. So I think free writing. I've even done writing exercise where you aren't allowed to look at the page um, as you're writing. So there's no like judgment from your eyes. It's just straight from your brain to the, the page. Um, but all without the all without external interference, meaning, you know, you don't have to worry about anything except getting your thoughts out. And then when you look at that, you can start to see your voice. And of course, you know, I've been writing for decades. So I've spent years refining my voice. And I, I do feel like I have a particular style of writing that is me. But also, you know, as a, a copywriter, a journalist, um, editorial writer, etc. I also have written for other people or entities and have to sound like them. And so then my voice isn't so much a part of it as is the other person or corporation's voice. <clears throat> but in this case, we're just talking about you sounding like you. And the best way to do that is um, to just get it out there really raw and then um, and then keep writing like that and take it from there. And of course, polish it and evolve it, but stay true to what you have to say in your own way um, without worrying overly much about impressing anybody, <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it. Um, the more you try to dress it up, probably the worse it will be. So just... Um, ref by refining, I mean just get real comfortable with it and um, it doesn't matter if it doesn't sound like anyone else, right? It's you. It should sound like you. So that's my thoughts about voice today. I also just wanted to mention this sweatshirt that I'm wearing. It says press. Um, 
I love it for two reasons. One is that I used to be a newspaper reporter by, way back in the day when I first graduated from university. And I had a little press badge and my little reporter notebook. And um, so it's nostalgic. But this is from a company called Wear the Peace. Like you're wearing the piece, P E A C E piece. Um, and it's got a watermelon on the sleeve because this is honoring the journalists from Gaza, not only the ones who have been killed by Israel, which there are more than a hundred um, journalists who've been killed, but also the ones who are still on the ground um, refusing to be silenced and trying to get their story out to the world every single day in spite of, you know, going on 170 days of genocide. So um, proceeds from this go to help the people in Gaza. And um, if you're interested in getting your very own press sweatshirt, check out Wear the Peace. Okay? Thanks for listening. See you next time.